Um, all right, well, welcome, welcome everyone to the May edition of the Twin Cities Tableau User Group. This is our only our second time doing a virtual um, virtual tug, and the first time we were on WebEx, and then we moved back to Zoom, and so we're having sort of two firsts in in these platforms. Um, so our our very first meeting, I asked for a little bit of grace and uh, and and tolerance from you guys uh, for the inevitable, tech, you know, technical difficulties and general awkwardness uh, as we as we work through this. But we'll still have fun. What I love most about this group is that it's super casual and informal, and it's really mostly about connecting and having a good time, even if we can't be in person. So. We have uh, some really great content lined up for you guys today. Uh, let's go over the agenda really quick. Minimize my video. So I'll cover a couple of things because inevitably there will probably be a few people who have never um, participated in one of our user groups before. So there's a couple things that we do um, each time. We always do get to know a member and that's really, we have a, a, a set number, a set of questions that we um, ask members um, in attendance. And if you would like to volunteer as our get to know a member for this meeting, you can chat um, chat in the chat box and just say, hey, I'd love to I'd love to answer those questions and share a little bit about myself. Um, or we can wait for like a minute in awkward silence until I scroll through the panelist list um, and just pick somebody. So your your choice on how you want that to roll. Um, and so after that, we have um, Daria Foranova, who is, do you like your, oh no, I, I have a spelling error. This is terrible. <laughs> Master of her, of her own destiny without the extra. I'm probably gonna have to fix that in the moment because I can't handle it, sorry. There, okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, so Daria is going to share her thoughts um, around creating reports in Tableau and, and her methodology behind that. And props to anyone that gets the, the Harry Potter reference in the way that I named this, this title, the creating reports in Tableau, a methodology. If not, please watch that movie and come back to me when you're cool. Um, and then we have Rory Wittune from Optum. Um, who is going to talk about the value of certification, which I assume means uh, the, the various certifications that Tableau offers. Um, and then the last thing we'll do is another one, another sort of standing agenda item where one sort of we're combining these two, we used to have them separate, but they're best thing I learned in group therapy. And um, that is where we open up the, the, the floor to you guys to share you know, little tidbits about what you might have, have learned, like the tiniest little things that have saved you time um, or something that you learned that you wished you knew six months ago, um, those kinds of things. Because we have, we have members in every single range of expertise. We have people who are, are on this call that probably have never touched Tableau before. Um, to, we might even have a Zen master on here. I, maybe, I don't know if Luke is on or not, but. Um, so yeah, just the whole gamut, right? So, so if you are, you know, are middle in your career and you think that like you don't know anything that someone else uh, doesn't know, that's false. So there are no stupid tips and we want to hear them. Um, I learn something probably every single time we, we do this. Um, and then the, the group therapy portion of that is where if you're stuck on some sort of an issue that you've just been banging your head against the wall um, and you would like to share that with with the group you can either just talk about it verbally or if you do have to, you're not in violation of any kind of um, uh, privacy phi any of that kind of stuff and you wanted to share your screen we could make that happen as well and collectively try to solve um, your problem or at least give you some ideas to try um, that's uh, probably one of my favorite my favorite things because we have solved some cool stuff for people 
Um, and it, it's essentially like, you know, free consulting from this giant think tank. So there, there can be a lot of value um, in that for, for anyone that is brave enough to share. Um, so, so that is our agenda. The next thing we'll do is jump, oh, actually I do have some, um, uh, some just upcoming events that are worth noting. Uh, the Power BI Showcase, where we recognize that Tableau's not the only game in town and you know, our, most of our clients aren't just using Tableau, like there's, there's a lot of cross in that market share. So being aware of what else is out there and what their strengths and weaknesses are, I think is really important. There's the Data Fam Community Jam, which has started since COVID and it's just sort of this weekly um, event that's put on by the same people that run the Tableau Fringe Festival. Um, and it's, it, it's you know, non, there, there, are, there are no geographical boundaries there. It's just to make sure that everybody has some way to connect with the, the community um, in the face of not actually being able to connect physically. Uh, we have, have the next the next event of She Talks Data, which is actually their first virtual event uh, with guest speaker Pri Nepal. We have the uh, the TC Data Viz Coffee and Donuts event, which is also their first time doing that event virtually. So, I, Trisha, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but people second time their own coffee and donuts, right? Yep, and it's our second time. Oh, okay, second. All right, cool. Um, and then our June tug is already scheduled. Actually, so is our July and our August tugs. Um, those are available for, for sign up and, and registration as well. And the last but not least is the She Talks Data Book Club, which um, Trisha is running. And she, I think, believe she's already selected the book. What's it called again? Invisible Women. Invisible Women, yes. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, and then just to touch on a couple of just on, like ongoing things that you can participate in. There's this visualizing gender equality uh, project. And then of course, now that all of these tugs are virtual, um, you can join any tug that, that suits your fancy and, and fits your schedule. So I will send out um, a copy of this PowerPoint and these little um, arrows here have the links to you know, register or get more information about um, all of these events. Okay, Michael, I hope I just answered your question. I'll send out this uh, send out this link. I could probably try to chat it in the chat box. I'm not sure if I can do that with documents, but one way or another, we'll get it out to you so you can just click on these links and sign up for, for what floats your boat. All right, um, so here are the questions for a get, know, get to know a member. They are not scary and they do not have to be well thought out and planned. Um, it's really just an opportunity for us to to get to know um, a couple people within our community, which I think is super important because we're not face to face and the networking, um, you know, the connection piece of it is something that I'm missing a lot. So uh, do we have any volunteers for our get to know a member? If you are a brave soul, please chat your interest in the chat box and we will unmute you. Woohoo! Hey. Olivia. Olivia. And I am sorry I'm not gonna try to pronounce your name because I'm probably your last name because I'm probably gonna ruin it and I will just let you do that. Um, Alyssa let us know when Olivia is unmuted. She's good. All right, Olivia, give us a shout. Olivia, <laughs> are you still on mute? You're like, like maybe your phone is muted. Oh, she says she doesn't have a Oh, shoot. We're good. We have uh, Tara Olson. Alyssa, can you unmute Tara and then we can do Brian. Yeah, sounds good. Hi, this is Tara. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you, Tara. Hi, uh, my name is Tara Olson and I work for a company called 110 Marketing. I'm um, actually just 110. Um, and we run sales and incentive programs and meeting and events. 
and my role is I've been a senior marketing analyst for them for oh almost 18 years um, wow. at heart I'm a, a statistical programmer in SAS and SQL but I started using Tableau a couple of years ago and really started using it once I went to TC19 this past year so that was really fun I learned so much there by doing all almost as many hands-on workshops and things like that that I could um, what kind of data do I analyze? Mainly it's for our internal clients. So one thing I've been working on is visualizing where we do all of our meeting and events um, across the globe. And then one kind of fun thing I've been doing lately is overlaying um, COVID statistics with it so that when we have new clients who come to us and say, well, we might be ready to um, think about running our, our meeting and events again. Um, what does the world look like in terms of where we have run them and where maybe we should look or should not look at running things in the future. So that's been an interesting application that of using the COVID data. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to reach out to you later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been using the, um, you know, Tableau posted all kinds of resources about data. So I've been using the data world data as well as the COVID Act now posted their um, data as well. So a few different places. Um, what am I good at? I honestly, I'm a pretty new user and I've been doing a lot of mapping, but I would say I am pretty good at um, taking other people's solutions and Googling my problems and then applying them to my, my visits. Um, that's just kind of my, I am, we have come from a really small analytics team and I'm really the only main Tableau user. So my resources are essentially Google and anything that Tableau has out there for me. Um, what features do I struggle with? I don't know if I'm struggling with anything in particular right now, but I'm still looking for a good application for Sankey diagrams because I just think they're so cool, mm -hmm. but I haven't been able to come up with anything yet. So, Well, if you are, are raring to get into Sankey diagrams, um, I, I don't think you can call yourself a beginner. That's <laughs> not appropriate. Um, well, that's great. And, and like the Googling thing, like that will take you far. I feel like that's mm -hmm. just the secret to any of us getting good at this mm -hmm. is just like upping your Google foo and, and, you know, applying what, what works to your situation and, and leaving the rest. So very nice to meet you, Tara. Thank you for sharing. All right. Should Brian. we go to Brian? Yep. He's good. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, my name is Brian Becker. I work for a consulting firm called Clairvoyant. Uh, I'm out here in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, beautiful sunshine right now. It's about nice. 90 degrees. Um, I am a data analyst. I've been with them since 2014, I think. Uh, and that's when I started using Tableau. Um, so it's, it's been about six years. Um, I didn't really start to use Tableau or get good at Tableau until I started doing the workout Wednesdays and the makeover Mondays. Um, so I would definitely recommend the workout Wednesday to anybody that's trying to get better at Tableau or just data visualization and, and, and at all, you know, um, that's really what propelled me forward in my career. Um, things that I'm good at, things that I struggle with, um, I, I had a boss who said, it's important to know what type of analyst you are. Are you good at creative stuff or are you good at somebody, tell, somebody telling you what they want and then you just reproduce? And I am definitely not a creative person. I really struggle with that. So when Makeover Monday comes out with just a data set and you gotta make up, make up your own stuff, I, I really struggle with that. So that's kind of, I try to do Makeover Mondays every week to try and get better. Um, but I'm definitely good at building what people say, you know, that I'm really good at build me this and I can go build them that and then I can add my own functionalities and my twists and that kind of stuff and try to apply what I've learned from the uh, workout Wednesdays. Um, so yeah, the, the type of data that I analyze. Um, uh, currently at Clairvoyant, I am, I am on loan to Shutterfly. So I'm contracted out to Shutterfly right now. And basically that's, you know, printing and that kind of stuff. And, uh, uh, we have some, we, we print a lot of uh, medical stuff for United Healthcare. Um, so I, I do a lot of data tracking on that. So where is it in the print process? Is it, is it loaded? Is it printed? Is it inbound? Is it, has it been delivered? Um, that kind of stuff is, is typically what I do with Tableau. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's good to know your strengths and weaknesses, isn't it? It is. It is. 
Um, I, 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 I didn't know much about uh, Tableau until I started doing those challenges and, and mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you think you're, oh, I'm, I'm decent at Tableau. I'd rate myself at about a six or a seven. And then you start doing these challenges and you realize how much you don't know and how far down you need yeah. to reevaluate your expertise. Yeah, it can definitely be a reality check too. But it's been um, great. It's been great, you know, and, and, and like Tara said before, I'm, I'm the only one that does what I do um, at my company and here at Shutterfly. And I don't have resources to go uh, to it. And so like, it, it, like you said, it's the community that's been helping out. It's Google and that kind of stuff. And, and everybody has been great and supportive and everybody's always eager to help. Yep. Awesome. Did you know that Luke Stankey is one of our own here in Minneapolis? I did know that. He's somebody that I've been following for quite a while. And uh, yeah, I, I, think, I, I think I saw... I saw him do the Pittsburgh one, uh, tug the other day and, and I knew he was from the Twin Cities. So that's, yep. that's about all I know of him. Yep, he's actually on, our, on the organizing committee for, for this, this tug. Oh, um, great. Yeah, so we'll, we'll claim him, we'll keep him around. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, thanks, Brian. It's really good to meet you. You bet. Um, do we have, let's do maybe one more since we're not, I don't really think we're going to be too pressed for time. So how yeah, about- Yeah, we have John, John next. Yeah, let's do cool. John. Yeah, hello. My name is John Roloff. Uh, I work for Parsons Electric, who is a, uh, we have a parent company, Arch Key Solutions. So we're a full US contractor uh, for electrical construction primarily. Uh, I just became a database administrator in the last couple of months. Uh, I was a senior project manager for uh, building automation systems. And uh, I started writing scripting through Visual Basic and uh, doing field, uh, field forms for some of our engineering teams uh, using an uh, application called Fulcrum for just doing field data. And we recognized pretty quick that we don't have a lot of our accounting systems and a lot of our job cost information that we can utilize. And so I worked with the parent company and that's kind of when uh, we all had the realization that, yeah, we actually do need something like Tableau. Uh, we just purchased it in the last uh, three, four months and um, uh, it's been going really well. I just had my uh, big launch like about a month ago and uh, it's good. Um, so I haven't been doing too much. Uh, most of the data that we analyze, like I said, is it's job cost, it's accounting, um, it's some, uh, it's actually a lot of dates and date differences. Uh, that was one interesting thing. Uh, what am I good at in Tableau? Uh, being a newbie, uh, definitely fresh. Um, <laughs> that's been fun. I learned a lot. Uh, Lord Google is my God and I follow that wherever I can. And uh, yeah, do as much as I can in uh, Tableau training as well. So um, I don't know that I would say I'm good at anything yet. I might be at about a 1.5 to 2 top seated amateur if I'm lucky. Um, That's great. What, <laughs> yeah, what features am I, fun am I struggling with? I would definitely say data blending and the whole uh, level of detail. I finally got a grip on it, so it's, it's working. But um, our total dashboard is very slow and... I'm told Tableau is really fast, and it is, uh, but we're bringing in way more records than we need to, uh, millions upon millions of records that we probably don't even need 80% of them, and I'm just starting to recognize that, and so, uh, yeah, we're, that's what I'm struggling with right now. That sounds like a great problem to bring up during our group therapy session, yeah. because sure. I, I, I mean, at least I have some suggestions for you. I'm sure others do as well, um, and all that. That's great. Have you found that, um, I mean, I feel like if you, if you have a good understanding of data, you know, you know, relational databases and just like how that's all structured and how that all works behind the scenes, that that can be a jumpstart into data visualization. Have you found that that, that has been a, a helpful springboard for you? It 100% has, and I have been doing a lot of uh, SQL scripts and uh, attaching Excel documents into an SQL server for a couple of years now. So that's been a, a huge help. What I've also noticed is Tableau operates a little differently than SQL does as far as how the data gets, um, dare I say, blended together or how the table joins go mm -hmm. together. It's not exactly the same. And that was one of the harder things to 
uh, let go of and to relearn inside the Tableau world. Yep. Well, two suggestions for you. If you're not taking advantage of the, um, the free training that's available right now, so Tableau is offering 90 days free um, of their, I'm not going to say it's all of their training. It's most of their training. Um, their like online on-demand training is free right now. So if you're not taking advantage of that, um, definitely do that. And then second, if you haven't already, check out Tableau Prep if you are struggling with, um, well, I won't say struggling, if you are looking for opportunities to understand data bl blending a little bit better and also um, have more capabilities and more functionality at your fingertips. Thank you for that. You are so welcome. Nice to meet you. Thanks for, thanks for volunteering. Okay. So awesome. That's, that wasn't so bad guys, was it? It's nothing to be scared of. All right, so I am going to pass it over to Daria. And Daria, I hope that you're just going to take a few minutes to um, tell everyone a little bit about yourself, your amazing self, and the journey that, um, that you've been on at least for the last few, few weeks. So I will stop sharing and give you the floor. Thank you so much, Serena. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Daria. And um, so I started my journey with Tableau, um, I think, three and a half years ago. So I started a small company. And um, honestly, my journey was quite interesting because I started learning about the tool just, you know, like without taking any courses or anything, just like I started downloading um, and following some Tableau superstars on Tableau public profile. And uh, just, you know, like step by step, I started learning more and more about data visualization and how to tell a story with Tableau. And uh, so I think that, um, Along my journey, I was always wondering on how I can first of all like find like-minded folks who are passionate about data visualization and uh, how I can maybe inspire more people to start learning about this amazing tool. And so essentially a couple of months ago, I started my journey on Tableau community. So, and uh, quite honestly, guys, to me, I think that um, last two months were absolutely, uh, were like just really interesting to me because more I started um, collaborating with um, those who uh, are passionate about visualization and Tableau, more I started feeling more and more inspired. And so honestly, just like my message is that uh, never underestimate the value of connecting with uh, like-minded folks and with the community. So if you are looking for um, sharing your knowledge and uh, connecting with those who are into the same things that you're, you, you are interested in, just like go on the uh, Twitter, go on Twitter and uh, check out our um, Tableau community um, because that is also, I think, a huge, uh, huge part of um, of your work. Uh, like, for example, if you work as a Tableau consultant, to have this, you know, like exposure what other people do. And uh, it's just like, it's very inspiring, you know, uh, learning and sharing um, knowledge on the subject. So, yeah, and so a couple of months ago, I started my business and right now I try to focus on um, conducting online courses and inspiring other folks on how to use Tableau um, as a data um, exploration tool, Tableau reports. So, and uh, today I'm gonna uh, share with you my approach on creating reports um, in Tableau. So essentially, you know guys, sometimes at work, I dreamed how great it might be to have um, some sort of like psychic abilities so I can predict what my cli clients are looking for. Um, so let's imagine the situation. So you are sitting in front of a client. So your client may go like, well, we're looking to create an executive dashboard. Um, and uh, so you start asking them different questions, but just like over time, you get a sense that maybe your client doesn't have any like precise understanding on what they're what they're trying what they would like you to create on Tableau. And so that is your job 
to help your client to understand um, what are the answers that they are looking for um, you to provide with your visualizations, with your reports. So the methodology of creating reports in Tableau is um, is approach that is going to help you to save so much time, energy, and resources um, on collaborating with your client before you create a report. So let's start. Um, so unless you know how to read other people's thoughts, start start with the right questions start with the right questions so first of all first of all um, um i guess that the first question to ask is who is your audience and what are their needs so identify the audience so the second step you might ask um, your client is what actions will um, you take in response to these answers so the second step is identify the value of your dashboard. Now, so uh, once you know who is your audience and what value they would like you to bring uh, with your report, the third step and probably the most important one is to identify what are the requirements for your dashboard. So the first question to ask, what questions need to be answered? with your dashboard. What would you do if you knew this information? Then you might proceed with, what value will the dashboard bring to your organization? What is the scope? Is it something broad? Um, are we trying to display information about the entire organization? Or we would like to focus on a specific function uh, or product? Now, once we ask these questions, we might ask as well, what is the business role? So would you like to, uh, to see um, a report that is going to provide a high level, broad and long term, -term view? Uh, so is it going to be like something strategic or would you rather go with operational dashboard that um, provides a focused near term view of performance? Okay, so the final question is, what are the key metrics that will focus users on actionable information? And personally, to me, that is, I guess, all times varied question to a client because um, it is quite important to understand how we do, do we measure success. How do we understand if the numbers are good or bad? Do we have any targets, thresholds? Do we need to see year over year or month over month growth? Now, um, now these are just all the questions that I went over. Um, so essentially, as everyone knows, um, dashboards uh, consist of multiple views. And so, um, for each and every view on your dashboard, it is also good practice to, to think through the questions that you might ask specifically for each and every view that you are going to put on your dashboard. So now we're looking at just a quick recap on the uh, six main questions to ask to uh, your client before you create a report. So what questions need to be answered? Um, identify the value, what is the scope, business role, and what are the KPIs. So once you know that, let's proceed with your requirements. So essentially, uh, view requirements might be um, some sort of like an overall description of the view. So you might also check out some things as um, data granularity, do we need to see any logical groupings, um, do we need to see comparison between categories or segments, uh, is there any like change over time, and uh, most importantly, how do we present um, uh, time, um, time? So do we need to look at historical trends, or is it going to be like a snapshot um, that is going to show performance at a single point in time? So, or we're looking, for example, at real-time data, predictive data. 
So then uh, scope uh, primary and secondary dimensions and measures. Uh, write down all calculations, list all the fil filters that need to be applied to a specific view, um, and what are the colors and uh, formatting. Well, at this point, you can start torturing your client with asking so many questions. And so now you can think of yourself as a wizard or a magician that has all the power, all the knowledge to proceed forward. So the next step is identify what, what type of report you are going to create. So this um, diagram um, at a glance shows um, three, main, um, three main categories of reports that you can create in Tableau. So the first category is executive um, dashboards. So executive dashboards usually track key performance indicators. Uh, analytical dashboards process data to identify trends. And finally, operational dashboards uh, tell you what is happening now. So essentially, by the end of the presentation, uh, you're gonna know, first of all, what, who is the audience, uh, what is the focus and the application, what are the conceptual and visual templates, and what are the showcases for executive, operational, and analytical dashboards. Great, let's start with executive dashboards. So for the executive dashboards, um, we usually create the, like the audience are, guess who, executives um, or high level management. So level, level of granularity, um, usually it is a high level metrics. So the focus is on the overall state of the business. So executive dashboards usually track progress to target. Progress to target year over year, uh, month over month uh, change. Now, so you might wonder, executive dashboards, what they are good for? They are usually good for providing what, where, and when information that others will then go act on. But they are not good for providing quick, more complex why and how questions. So essentially, uh, they are not very good for exploratory analysis. You might wonder, what are the conceptual templates you might apply? Well, essentially, conceptual templates are um, the, main, um, uh, the main conceptual parts that you can essentially bring to your dashboard. So for the main components for executive dashboards are current value, target value, um, progress to target, historical trends, and you might also put some year over year or a month over month changes. Um, you might think, well, okay, so these are the main conceptual components of your dashboard, but how about visuals? So the visual vocab vocabulary um, might be as um, the following. So essentially, having said that, um, Executive dashboards usually focus users' attention on high-level metrics, so you can always use bands on your dashboard, then simple Gantt bar and um, um, and just 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 a bar uh, showing progress to target. Then you may play around with data charts. And also, if you would like to bring year over year or month over month change to your dashboard, you can also um, use uh, magnitude. Okay, so um, now, now we're looking at executive dashboard template that shows what are the high-level metrics um, that you can put your, on your dashboard? Um, also, um, this template shows the actual KPS performance and progress to target, and uh, some historical trends, and as I mentioned, KPIs. Okay, so you might wonder, how do you apply this um, executive template to your, to your data? 
So this dashboard was built by Andy Krivel. And uh, so this dashboard uh, shows the main components. So first of all, it shows uh, progress to target. It shows KPIs, so current performance, previous period performance, and change over time, and some historical trends. And so here you see how easily um, the template that I showed before, you can apply to different, you know, like products, segments, um, how you can apply to any, I don't know, like any, anything uh, to your dashboard. Just follow the same structure. And uh, one of the other things that I really like about this dashboard uh, is color use. So as you can see, there are only two colors used on this dashboard. And so that is essentially a very good practice to, um, to show, uh, to, to use um, two or maximum three colors on your dashboard. Well, okay. So let's consider some other showcases. Let's, let's think that your client is a small company in the retail industry. And so the showcase might be that the head of the company is missing a picture of the overall performance of the company. And there is no centralized place to look at a broad organizational KPIs in a single view. So you might wonder, what is the challenge? Well, let's say you were asked to create a report for the CEO that takes literally 20 seconds to understand which metrics are below or above the target. So the head of the company can quickly address the issue to a corresponding department. Okay. So this dashboard is an amazing um, example on how you can um, create an executive version of dashboards in Tableau. So essentially, again, um, this dashboard um, was built by Adam McKinn. And um, this dashboard clearly shows uh, progress to target. Um, first of all, uh, yes, for sure, um, the actual performance, then progress to target and historical trends. And again, so um, these are just two colors that are used on this dashboard. So you can easily, literally in 20 or 30 seconds, you can understand which metrics are below. Um, established target and which metrics are exceeded. So you can, in 20 seconds, address uh, issues to a corresponding department. Okay, let's switch to analytical dashboards. Analytical dashboards usually are used for business and data, used by business and data analysts. They usually track um, top to bottom level metrics, focus on a specific segment and monitor key metrics at a glance and allow you to drill into why this is happening. So um, also it is really important to mention that sometimes they help or, um, organizations to establish targets based on insights into historical data. So they usually monitor historical data and seasonality. Okay, so they're good for analytical dashboards are really good for uh, why and how this is happening, but they are not good for a comprehensive view of complex organizations. Okay, so visual vocabulary. Um, having said that um, analytical dashboards um, usually provide you with how and why this is happening, it is always a good practice to put some sort of like comparison and uh, reference line. Um, so you can also, uh, you can use um, magnitude, you can use simple ranking, correlation between uh, two or more variables. Um, so correlation between dimensions, correlation between measures. Um, then uh, bar to hole is very useful for, um, let's say, um, uh, for comparing bar to hole. Okay, and so um, you might wonder, what are the conceptual templates for analytical dashboards? So essentially for analytical dashboards, the, ma the main components are um, what? So show KPIs for a specific segment. Um, tell your user if there are 
any red flags. Then you might create a logical flow with where and when. Show time and location, where and when this is happening. Allow your user to drill down and explore. The next question is why? Why this is, with it, why this is happening and what is causing the problem? Drill, allow your, again, allow your user to drill into why. And the final step is what is called the action. Knowing what is causing the problem, what is the next step to take? Okay, let's consider another showcase. So your client is a regional manager. Showcase might be as approaching the end of last year and the profit target was missed for a specific region. The client doesn't have a single place to drill into what was causing the problem. Now, you are asked to create a dashboard that allows a user to drill into why and what is causing a low profit for a region. Let's take a look at this dashboard. So essentially, um, you might start with showing what regions haven't met the profit target in last year. So essentially, um, this simple bar charts um, show that um, the West region uh, hasn't met the target, uh, hasn't, met, uh, hasn't met the target, while a Central and South, uh, south regions um, met the target, profit target in last year. Okay, so once you know which region was causing the problem, you might click and so um, this map, um, honestly, um, uh, this um, this state should have been hexagon um, in hexagon shape, but something just um, something went wrong here. Anyway, so clicking on West uh, region, um, now you can understand where the profit haven't been mapped. So essentially, you drill further. So in which states um, in West region? Um, which, uh, which states uh, ha haven't met uh, the target. So essentially with the red color, you can see um, uh, states with negative profit. And then, okay, so once you understand uh, that, um, for example, in this particular state, um, the profit target hasn't been met, you can drill into when was the most significant year of a year drop in profit. Okay, so now you know region, you know, specific states, and you also have this ability to know when um, was this, the most significant year over year drop. Okay, great, so it was in February and April. And the last part of this dashboard shows you which of the distribution centers in this region, in this, um, in this state, um, show the most significant drop in profit. So essentially, um, you see that Southwest Distribution Center shows the most significant year-over-year -year drop in profit, and so that is uh, where you can um, you can you can essentially contact this distribution center and check in what is going on, guys, with the profit um, for your specific distribution center. What is causing the problem? So that is an example of analytical dashboards. Uh, that you can create in Tableau, operational dashboards. Operational dashboards provide data awareness and time-sensitive data. They're usually got for, good for operations, analysts, and mill management. So the level of granularity is the most granular data. They usually focus on catching red flags and um, KPIs performance on an hourly and daily basis within a specific department. They usually monitor current activity. Okay, so they are good for identifying specific issues that require immediate action or fix, but they are not very good for seeing a comprehensive view of the organiza organization or like they're not good for overseeing broad organizational KPIs. Okay, so the visual vocabulary for operational dashboards might be showing um, hourly trends, weekly trends, I love heat maps, using heat maps for operational dashboards. Also progress to target, because with operational uh, dashboards, sometimes we track how like a specific department um, is progressing towards a goal that ha uh, has been set up for a week. 
And so um, you can also bring together, um, uh, you can bring together um, hourly trends and weekly trends and incorporate everything um, together, sorry, heat maps. Um, and incorporate everything together. And uh, just in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna show how um, this visualization starts showing a uh, very much comprehensive view of uh, very granular data. So conceptual template for operational dashboards, um, you can um, essentially uh, the main, the bottom line is again, what is called to action. So you may start, you may start with showing upper, um, overall state for a week, like progress target. Then you may show hourly and daily performance. Are there any critical issues or what is causing the problem? Drill down and explore. And the final is call to action. So knowing what is causing the problem, what is the next step? Uh, what is the, uh, the next step? step to take. Okay, so you might wonder, what are the showcases? So let's say uh, that your client is IT support team. So the team doesn't have a single report to track an overall volume of the tickets, which is causing the overall overload at work. Now, you are asked to create a dashboard that monitors the volume of tickets on an hourly, daily, and weekly basis. So essentially, there are two main goals here. The first is um, to track the overall team performance. So essentially how many results and unresolved tickets, how many tickets are with critical or major status so the team can address tickets accordingly. Um, and the second part of your dashboard might speak to you how to optimize the teamwork and resources based on the busiest time during on uh, days during a week so the tickets with critical priority are addressed and resolved immediately. Now, this dashboard was built by Andy Kribble and uh, one of the reasons why I absolutely love this dashboard because it clearly shows uh, it, is, it is a really great example on how we can show uh, very much granular data. So essentially here we're looking at overall weekly performance, so how we're progressing towards uh, the target that has been mm, set up for a week. Then we're drilling, uh, we're, uh, we're um, going to uh, the next step. So how many major, major and critical tickets uh, we have at this point? How many open tickets? And the bottom part shows you tickets priority. So essentially, which tickets requ require immediate action. And so, um, yes, for sure, like these are just different categories. Uh, but that uh, this dashboard clearly shows you where we are at right now and what are the major uh, what are the major tickets that we need to start working on. Now. How about properly resourcing your team? So what are tickets, uh, when are tickets open? Right, so knowing when um, the most, uh, when are the most busy time during a week, uh, knowing that piece of information, we might consider uh, putting a little bit more resources. So, um, so the team works uh, more effectively. So um, that is um, how we can understand that. For example, on Monday, we have the highest uh, volume of tickets. And so now I know that, for example, on Monday, uh, we have the highest volume of tickets, but exactly when? And so essentially this bar chart shows you that during um, the earliest hours, during the middle of the day, and uh, I guess um, early in the evening, these are top three hours uh, that require um, um, the most of team resources. Okay, so another showcase. Let's say, for example, your client is a bike rental company. So, and you are asked to track what is what is the busiest time during a day, week, and season for bike rents. 
so the client can effectively supply the transportation units according to demand. Okay, so that is another great, great example on how we can bring together heat maps and um, bar charts. So essentially when our bicycle is hired in London. Um, so uh, uh, essentially we can easily grasp that during early hours and uh, during uh, six, uh, I guess five, six and six p.m. Um, so essentially cycle hires peak at commuting hours during the week and shift to the afternoon on weekends. And so essentially that is how we can understand that, okay, so great. So during 8 a.m. we have the most busiest time during, um, during uh, uh, the start of day, a day. And uh, so this heat map clearly shows you um, on which days uh, from Monday to Sunday, um, 8 a.m. Uh, is the most busiest hour. So, and also um, uh, on the right, um, on the right, on the right hand, you can see what are the most busiest um, bike rentals uh, times, oh, sorry, days during a week. So that is uh, when bringing together bar charts and heat maps um, allow you to uh, digest very much granular data um, um, very comprehensively. So the summary is that asking the right questions is going to save time, energy, and resources on developing a dashboard in Tableau. And so the game guess what I would like to see on my dashboard is not going to happen. So please check out this Tableau Superstars um, and so that is my contact info. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can also always ch um, check out my Tableau public profile. Um, thank you. That is it. That was awesome, Daria. Thank you so much. That that was like such a massive amount of massive amount of great content. Um, thank you. We and it's like it's funny because like I feel like. You know, I mean, there was definitely some some uh, some great examples that people may not have tried or thought of before. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, you know, the overall concepts of like, you know, just asking the right questions and taking time to understanding to understand the you know the audience and the value and like what the why and the action. Like, these are all things I feel like are like we know them in our heart of hearts, but it's so easy to just forget them when we get requests and we want to just fill that request and move on to the next thing, right? And, you know, maybe we can't always take every single jet dashboard that we do to, to, to the, the max, um, but knowing, having the tools to do that when those opportunities arise is really important. So thank you very much. Um, we have about, we have, I wanna make sure that we leave time for Rory's presentation. So maybe we have one question for Daria before we switch over to, to Rory. Um, you can chat it in the chat box. Um, otherwise, we'll, we'll post Daria's um, presentation and contact information out for you guys to, to see, and you can reach out to her directly as well, after the fact. Okay. I don't see any questions coming through. Coming through. So, um, all right, so let, uh, thank you very much again, Daria. That was fabulous. And let's welcome Rory from Optum. Is your baby still sleeping? <laughs> no, sorry. Baby hasn't come yet. Baby is uh, is due in July. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, maybe maybe they are sleeping. Yes, hence the we background. <laughs> <laughs> so you're prepped and ready for baby number. Well, that's a stretch, but getting there closer, yes. Okay. All right. Well, okay. welcome. Tell us about yourself and, and what you got for us. Yeah. So let me just get a few things ready here. All right. Can you see my um, picture of a baby? <laughs> yep. I chose that as it's uh, pretty representative of my life right now, and I'm sure many of you others uh, who are working from home. So thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for letting me uh, have an opportunity to speak. 
speak here a little bit about a, a topic that's near and dear to my heart, which is studying uh, and, and certification. So um, I've got just a quick agenda here. Um, we'll, we'll go through a little bit about me and my team and, and kind of our Tableau story. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about how I think uh, about certification and, and the use case associated with that. Uh, for those who are interested in, in pursuing a Tableau certification at some point, uh, go through the process to do so and then uh, wrap up and, and happy to answer any questions at that point. So a little bit about me, uh, St. Thomas alum, long time ago, um, I'm a credentialed actuary, uh, which means I'm an associate in the Society of Actuaries and a member of the American Academy of Actuaries, um, a director at, at Optum within their actuarial consulting practice, um, which means that I'm primarily responsible for looking at year over year trend drivers. Uh, so claims costs per member per month, breaking things down into utilization and admits type thing or cost per admit, um, looking for where there's cost pressures and, and opportunities to bend the trend. Um, I live in Eden Prairie uh, with my wonderful wife and three kids with number four on the way. Uh, and our, our rescue dog, so uh, you know, I, kind of got this suburbia thing down, uh, definitely a definition of suburbia. Um, okay, and you notice I, I put, don't do the Tableau, I'm not a, uh, a Tableau developer, uh, at least not a very good one. And um, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit as uh, that's something that I rely on the team to do uh, a lot of. Okay, so my Tableau story. Uh, so we actually started using Tableau quite a long time ago by, by Tableau standards uh, in 2014. And at that point in time, it was very, uh, very basic, very simplistic heat maps, uh, basic charts, basic graphs, um, didn't really go anywhere. We didn't, we didn't really do a lot with Tableau um, until we got to like 2017-ish, you know, 2016, 2017, um, when, when a bad developer had a, had a decent idea. And that, that idea was to take our existing, you know, we've been doing reporting, Excel-based reporting for 20, 30 years and had a good brand and, and reputation in that space. And we also had a, a data team that was moving terabytes of data around on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's connect those two together and allow drill, uh, dr drilling in, you know, a seamless drilling mechanism that was fast and that you could, um, that you could make widely accessible. So there's sort of a speed and an audience component to that. Um, traditional methods of select from where, you know, using SQL, SAS, that required a, a very specific skill set to be able to analyze those large, uh, large data. You have to extract it, reconcile it, and then present it. This process was extract once, reconcile it once, and then build something that you could use at all those different levels of grain, including the existing um, top level summary view that we've been doing for a very long time. As you do that, as you go away from, you know, select from where, you now have the ability to broaden your audience. And so there's um, some C-suite level and, and just more senior people who, who don't do programming as a day-to-day -day function. You open up your, your reporting to those types of people. So in 2018, we started, um, started modeling that, started doing that on a um, single case and iterating on. That scaled up pretty quickly. And, and then we get into uh, you know, 2019, 2020, and, and we get to the point where it's a pretty proven capability within our team and uh, something that we use across um, all of our large engagements. So a little bit of background on the team. Um, I threw a, a mission statement in the top there, um, which, you know, sounds pretty, but kind of just made up before this call. <laughs> and it, it's, you know, basically to say, hey, we're a small team. Um, we're we're kind of mission focused in, in working in tight deadlines, um, budget conscious, and just trying to get as much and add as much value to our clients as we can. Um, as we look through the team, one thing you'll notice is that they're all uh, Tableau certified. So Rachel is a desktop certified associate um, and also a credentialed actuary. Uh, Brenna's an exam away from a credentialed actuary and, and a certified professional. Um, Anjali is certified associate and also has a PhD in applied math. And then Alden is uh, the, the longest tenured and, and definitely our most expert data wrangler. Uh, for those of you from UHG, you probably know him as he's pretty, pretty widely available within the, the UHG Tableau community. Um, so small team, you know, four of us, uh, or five, I guess, including myself, and four Tableau developers, all fully certified. And, and I think um, we're, we're small but, but mighty. This team is spread across the, across the country geographically, uh, pretty diverse team with a diverse skill set, um, but also a pretty awesome team. And so 
that's the background on me and my team and, and using Tableau. And as we jump into um, the certification use case, I'm going to duplicate slides and say that this is kind of the point of, of my team getting certified <clears throat> is being able to put those credentials down onto a slide or walk into a, a um, conference room, maybe not these days, jump onto a conference call and say, hey, fully certified um, mix of data SMEs, uh, actuaries, PhD in applied math. Uh, this team has established credibility through the certification process. Um, that kind of speaks for itself and sort of whatever message that I have next um, doesn't, doesn't really matter at that point I've already established the credibility to say this team is, is highly competent in Tableau consulting um, and we know that based on their based on their um, certification levels that has been a, a very valuable resource for for me in, in kind of selling this product and selling this team uh, but also very valuable for well we'll get into that multiple levels of, of value here Okay, so if my use case is establishing credibility, take an exam is the only way to do that. Um, so that email signature does, you know, prove a base level of kind of in the visualization best practices, especially if you, know, you get that uh, certified professional, that's, that's kind of the point of it. Um, interestingly, I, I think that, you know, we've seen examples of this in, just in this call today, that other examples are using Tableau Public or using your social media page. So, uh, Tableau Public, I oftentimes think of using for inspiration, right, and going out and, and drawing inspiration on how to do something new or uh, how to approach a, a certain type of visualization. Um, but I think also that can be used as building your own brand and building your own presence um, and certainly establishing your own credibility within the Tableau community. Um, the second thing then is, is social media, right, and I, I think we see that especially from, from some of the largest brands within uh, the Tableau community, um, you know, Andy Kriebel mentioned several times here, great social media campaign, um, also great, you know, Tableau public campaign. I assume he's sort of but uh, just different ways of establishing levels of credibility. One thing I'll note that's just um, kind of interesting uh, for me, uh, I do see occasionally Tableau um, resumes, and I, and I think that's a really creative, um, a creative approach to to selling yourself. You're building your own brand. And you're, you're telling a story about something so personal as your professional profile. Um, but that also is establishing uh, your understanding of visualization best practices and you're selling that to a potential uh, hiring manager or employer. Very creative uh, approach um, and, and something that I think is um, really interesting that I've seen a few times and, and, and I think falls under this sort of establishing credibility uh, cohort. Um, Second thought here is relating that back to being an actuary where there's, there's sort of rules and regulations that say, hey, you have to jump through these hoops and you have to have these um, formal, you know, formal rules that say you need to get credentialed to issue a statement of actuarial opinion. That doesn't exist within the Tableau world, right? There's no rule saying that you should be certified. Um, in fact, I'm sure you know, many of folks on this call are, are highly capable, you know, highly functional Tableau developers who aren't certified but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll kind of go into my next slide with a few benefits associated with, uh, with being certified. And I'll, I'll touch on those on two different levels. There's sort of the team and the employer level, and then as you as the individual. Um, so at the team or the employer level, I beat that uh, the credibility horse to death. I won't talk anymore on that one. Uh, but there is this process of learning through the certification exam, right? And, and kind of rounding out your skills. Um, what you do in your day-to-day -day job, you become an expert on, but then how do you get outside of the scope of that? Certification can bring you, can bring you that process. And, and getting certified, you can actually justify a little bit easier to say, we need to implement some type of training program. Um, and we're doing that in the hopes of being certified at the end result. Um, likewise, using the uh, Tableau conference and is, a, is a great way to get certified. Um, <clears throat> this is something that I've been pretty successful with is saying, hey, we need to go to the Tableau conference in order to get certified. And it's a great way to position that against your, position that to your employer to say, I need to go to the Tableau conference to get certified. Um, for those of you who are, who are familiar with Tableau conference, it's a great time. Uh, I've been to several actuarial conventions over the year, been to, a lot, uh, been to my first Tableau conference last year. I can tell you firsthand, the Tableau community is way cooler than the actuarial community. Um, Vegas is a great time, right? So it's hard to go wrong there. Um, 
but also you will be able to go and get certified and you know take the exam. Um, it's it's a using using the certification process to get to the Tableau conference uh, can be a highly effective strategy. Um, for you individually, the one thing I would mention is uh, the last one. It's an opportunity to study. Who wouldn't want to do that? It sells itself. It's a great idea. <laughs> but a few other things there too with you know your resume and um, you definitely a marketable skill that, that you can build your own brand with as, a, as an individual too. Okay, so that kind of wraps up my um, certification use case. That's how I use it, how I think about the, um, how I think about certification. Um, I will touch on the certification process then. So how do we, how do we actually go through and get certified if, if that's something that you choose to do? So there's three levels of desktop certification. I should mention that this is all focused on desktop. Um, I don't know anything about Tableau server certifications. If you have questions on that, uh, click that link and don't call me because I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't run a server. For those of you who do, uh, there is a process to get, to get certified um, as a Tableau server administrator. Um, but then there's three different levels uh, for the Tableau desktop certification. So the specialist, the associate, and the professional. Um, you can see the, the specialist is, you know, foundational skills, one hour long, uh, associate comprehensive functionality, sort of core, you know, Tableau developing two hours long, and then the advanced, um, advanced topics and, and really focusing on the visualization best practices as a, as a desktop professional in a three hour. The one thing I really want to focus on here and mention is the suggested, oops, excuse me, the suggested product experience. Um, three plus months for the specialist isn't that long and a year for the, for the professional isn't that long. Uh, and so folks who have been using, you know, Tableau, I, I mentioned we've been using this for six years now. Uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility, even if you're relatively new to using Tableau, um, especially if it's part of your day-to-day -day job, to, to consider getting certified because it, it doesn't take that long uh, to be qualified or to feel that you have enough experience to consider sitting for one of these examinations. Uh, to take the certification, you can do it at the Tableau conference. Or, um, clearly, I'm a huge fan of doing it at the Tableau conference. Um, strongly recommend going, taking it with your friends. You know, if you're going to sit down two, three hours, sit for an exam, might as well properly celebrate afterwards with the people that you want to be around and the culture and the community that you want to be with and kind of why you're there in the per first place. But worth noting that you can do this anytime online um, if you so choose. Um, so how do you prepare for the exam? There's, there's a few things that are worth touching on. First is the exam prep guide. Uh, so that's a PDF that you download and kind of gives you all the logistical information. Uh, where do I begin? That's, the, that's kind of how you start is, is using that exam prep guide. Um, the online training courses, I think this was mentioned earlier, 90 days free. Um, you can definitely choose to download these you know, online courses, get educated that way. Again, you're gonna round you, be uh, better around developer as you see things that are part of your day-to-day -day job. Um, interestingly enough from, from my team, I had good feedback to say that the Tableau community events are particularly helpful. Uh, so Makeover Monday and Workout Wednesday, um, those are great ways to pick up a data set that you're not familiar with and profile it quickly and get, get accustomed to being to using a data set that you're, you're not used to, you haven't had to, haven't had to do something with before. Uh, that gets you in the process or in the, in the mode of using a data set that you're not used to, which is what you will be required to do at, at the certification exam. So that piece can be a really helpful um, prep, prep uh, mechanism with the, the Makeover Monday or the Workout Wednesdays. Clearly, last thing you can do, I mean, is, is just your job, right? Or more than likely, if you're using Tableau in your job, you're just going to naturally get better at it over the course of time and, and with additional experience. Um, okay, then last thing is the, um, excuse me, just one second. I did like set this up on two different computers, so I'm looking at notes quick. Um, last slide here though is on badges. And, and so badges are um, kind of an interesting concept that loosely tied in with certification. They're free, they're a little bit less um, time intensive than, than what the certification process is. I also think they're kind of neat because they, they go outside of the scope of typical, you know, Tableau development. Um, a couple of things that I'd, I'd point to is Tableau executive sponsor or Tableau community leader. Uh, these are things that are going to go through the Tableau blueprint and how to, how to implement, um, you know, organizational change and, 
things like that that are not part of a certification process, but are really important to setting up your Tableau community. Um, also, Tableau consumer. Like, this is an interesting concept for someone who's consuming data and analytics out of a Tableau environment, but not the person who's developing it. Uh, these can still be you know, meaningful differentiation mechanisms uh, if you choose to complete one or more of these badges, share them on your social media, show them, share them on your LinkedIn, um, you know, can still be some type of, of differentiation mechanism um, without putting in all the time and investment of, of an actual certification exam. So those are my thoughts on, on Tableau certification. Um, I will just put my contact information up here for you. If you have questions, comments, thoughts on certification, feel free to reach out. If you have an awesome knock-knock joke, please feel free to <laughs> drop that my way too. Um, thank you. Thanks, Rory. That's good stuff. Um, I have two questions for you. And uh, for anyone else that might have questions for Rory, I'll give you a chance to type them out. Um, sure. Think them, type them out in the chat. So first question is, uh, well, I, I'm assuming that your employer paid for these, right? Yes. And would you have done it if you had to pay, pay for it out of pocket? Um, as well, as an individual or as a, <laughs> from my perspective, yes, I would have uh, absolutely had my team do it. Uh, for me personally, I would have, I mean, I first would try hard to get my employer to reimburse the cost associated with it. If you weren't able to um, reimburse the cost associated with it, I think then it's probably more on a case by case basis. Depends on the value that you're going to get out of it. Depends on the value that your employer is going to get out of it. Um, and ultimately how much of a brand recognition value you think that is to, to your personal presence. Yeah. And so a second question related to that is, do you have any tips for people who are, you know, struggle to make that case, right? Because some employers are like, oh, well, you're just making yourself more marketable and then you're going to go get a better job. And, you know, personally, my thought to that is like, if you've got people who are trying to leave your organization, you should probably help them because, you know, help them do that because they're not actually helping you. <laughs> yeah. So, so maybe some, maybe some manager training would be my first suggestion there. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in, in building that case, yeah, or, that's tough, right? And I, and I think that's, that's something that I struggle with because I'm in a utilization targets, you know, billable goals type role. And how do you justify, how do you get your employer to agree that instituting uh, educational opportunities and investing in education is, is important? Um, I, I think that that can be a very tricky question. Um, I, I don't have the answers for it. I mean, that's, I don't know who has the answers for that stuff. That's, it, it's, it's on a case by case basis. It's trying to apply the right amount of leverage with the right amount of buy-in from at least one you know, senior enough leader who you can convince to say, this is, the value, this is the value that we're going to get out of it. Having said that, that still may not be successful. Uh, organizational change is really difficult. Yep, yep, I, I agree. And I think sometimes it just comes down to, you know, putting your foot down and just saying, like, I want this. Mm -hmm. Like, however, we need to build this into my, you know, tie it to my performance or my bonus structure or whatever that might be. Like, this is something that I want. And if you want me to stay here, you're gonna find a way to give it to me. Kind of thing. We had one question from um, Anna Didi who who asked if you know if your ultimate goal is to get to that final the desktop certified professional, does it make sense or do you have to stop um, at the other two the the certifications below that? No, you can do any of them. Um, yeah, I think I think you start out. Um, I, I think you can start out if either the uh, associate or the desk uh, the, the first one. Um, but I, I don't think you're required to keep going by any stretches. If you, if you start with one and you're like, yep, this is great. Um, the, the, um, there are time limits on the associate and the professional. And I think that's something that you'll have to, um, weigh and that's, you know, new versions of Tableau are constantly coming out. That's actually one point that I make is if you build a version of Tableau, and you sit for a certification is going to be administered on the most recent version of Tableau. Uh, so if you're if you're using an older version, you may want to get familiar with some of the new features before you sit for that sit for that exam. Yep, great point. Um, I had a couple other lots of questions on this one. Let me scroll up here. Um, Somebody asked what, you know, what's the difference between a Tableau user and a Tableau developer? My guess is that that's just nomenclature. That's just, so 
unless you're talking about like the badges that Rory was showing where you can, you can get a badge for being a Tableau consumer. Yeah. Which is just, you have <laughs> shown some sort of level of efficiency in being able to use the tool as a consumer versus being able to yeah. build it. I think that one's geared towards like you have access to a Tableau server environment and you are using um, data off of the Tableau server, but you're not the one who's developing that content and publishing that content up to the server. You're actually the, the client, if you will, and consuming that data and using it for actionable results. Yep, that would be if you had a viewer or a explorer license and access to server, exactly like you said versus a creator who is a developer. Yep. But I feel like Tableau user is a really loose term. It is. So hopefully that, that answers your, your question. Um, if not, feel free to reach out, out to us afterwards. Okay, last question uh, that we'll take is, are there any pretests that are available to take advantage of? Yeah, I think that a lot of that is covered in the exam prep guide. Um, I think that will give you some of the uh, information that's associated with the practice exam questions. Um, if you have more specific questions on, you know, what and how to prepare for something, shoot me a note and I'll be happy to, to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and connect on uh, how some of our folks um, went through that process. Cool. Thanks, Rory. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so we have about 10 minutes left um, of our session. So let's see if we can use that time, uh, either sharing best thing I learned tips, um, or if somebody has uh, an issue that they would like to bring up to the group and let us help you try to solve. So feel free to chat in the, in the chat box. If you've got something you wanna talk about, we can get you unmuted. So you're not stuck typing out um, everything that you want to say. Um, okay, Mitch has a general tip about Viz alerts. Can we unmute J J Mitch? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Great. Uh, yeah, my name is Mitch. Um, I'm a data analyst, BI developer with Optum. Um, and the latest theme on our team has been using VisAlerts, which is an open source add-on tool to send data-driven alerts on, uh, from Tableau server. Uh, didn't have to install it on the server myself. Thank you, server admin team, for taking care of that. We get to just consume its, its great capabilities. Uh, but it was built by Matt Coles. He was a, a developer at Tableau as kind of an open source add-on um, to extend some of the capabilities. Um, Definitely recommend you take a look at VisAlerts. Um, he has a GitHub page with all the user documentation, but the, the core use case for us uh, is being able to customize data-driven alerts and email them to users. Um, Tableau has gotten better at some of the data-driven data alerting and some of the recent releases where you can like click on an axis and set a threshold, uh, but it's still relatively limited in its capability where with VisAlerts, you have the ability to more or less fully customize what your message looks like, when it sends and uh, to whom it goes to. Uh, the other reason I really like it is we embed all of our dashboards into portals. We don't send users directly to the Tableau server, uh, so they don't really care where the visualizations are coming from and any of the emails from Tableau server just automatically send you right back to the server where with VisAlerts we can customize uh, all of the links that get embedded and send them to the the portal and, and give them some more personalized information. Um, most recently we've been working on extending some of the, the HTML support uh, so making some pretty fancy uh, HTML designed messages, embedding our Tableau dashboards and visualizations in them, and really engaging users who might not otherwise know our dashboards are out there, and getting our analytics in front of an entire new population of people who will be able to leverage them. Um, I recognize that somewhere in here, uh, there's probably a, a presentation topic for a future uh, uh, Tableau user group, but right now definitely just want to give the the recommendation to the community to check it out if you haven't looked at this alerts before yeah cool thank you i i have not looked into that sounds like sounds like a pretty neat thing thank you um all right so actually lots of activity on on this so let's uh let's go to sam Eppley. hi sam 
Um, he's asking if there is a way to toggle between include and exclude filters via a parameter. Sam, we might need to unmute you for this one to, to um, have you clarify that, that question a little bit more. Can we unmute Sam? Hi, this is Sam. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Sam. Tell us what you mean. So um, one thing I'm attempting to build is where there'd be a parameter that would be on a dashboard um, that would be, uh, it would enable the user to toggle between include and exclude. And I know that in the filter settings, what you're able to do is you're able to specify include or exclude. Um, and outside of having to force, you know, basically build two versions of um, a dashboard, one where the filters are include and one where they're exclude, I'm curious if anybody has um, had any form of use case where they've been able to specify include or exclude in a parameter. And then based on that value, all of the filters down below, not that they necessarily switch, but if mm -hmm. there's a way you can almost make Tableau think that, you know, we want to include or exclude. And I'm, I'm that's probably not super clean. I know Katrina, you mentioned LODs and I'm not referring to LODs, so. Would, so some something almost like a set? Um, set action kind of a thing, but not quite, if I'm following correctly? Potentially, and um, I'm just trying to mull over this and see if it's even feasible, um, so. Okay. That's the first thing that, that came to my mind is that, you know, you can, you can use a set, potentially using a set as a filter. Um, but are you talking about being able to change out, you know, use it as like a parameter, right? So you're able, able to change out what is excluded or included? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, um, let's see. Michael suggested set actions, but it sounds like that's like one level above the mm -hmm. set action. Because I think the set actions is, is um, specific to a particular measure or, or dimension, right? Rather okay. than being able to swap that out um, at the user's leisure. That's, I think that's or, the starting point. Uh, let's say for instance that on my dashboard that I have 10 different models that I've got filters applying to, um, and if each of them essentially had a switch to jump between include or exclude using, in that case, 10 different set actions, it'd be a little bit complicated on the setup, but would that potentially be a way to tackle that? Yeah, potentially. So grandiose one yeah. large overarching set like action. If you start down the path of using set actions, that you'll probably be headed in the right, in the right direction. If anybody wants to, um, share some, some either contrary advice or additional advice, raise your hand and we will get you unmuted because I um, certainly am not the expert in all these things. And, and the great benefit of being together is that we can, we can work as one mind to try to solve these problems. All right, it looks like we don't have any hands raised at the moment. So Sam, check out set actions and let us know how far that gets you. You'll have to come back and give a presentation on it, of course. Okay. <laughs> okay. Take notes, I'll have material to go off of. So. All right, sounds okay. good. All right, let me scroll back up. Here we Who have a I Lauren oh. Beeler. Tyler, sorry if I put your na last name, Lauren. A question about complicated filtering. So if you want to unmute Lauren. Here she is. It's Lauren Filer. Um, Filer, thank you. Yeah, so I'm working with some survey data and I'd like to be able to use a filter in my dashboard so that if somebody answers, say often to question one, um, or sorry, like I can, I can look at all the group of people who answer often to question one and see what they answer for question two. And right now, the way I have things set up, if I click like the often in question one, 
And I just see who says often in question two. Does that make, does my question make any sense? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get you. Um, are you using, like, how do you have your filters set up? Are they actual filters in the dashboard? Um, or are you using like a visualization as the filter? I, I tried to set it up as a dashboard filter. Okay. I wonder if using a, um, using like creating a visual, like here are my answers for question one, right? And, and I don't know, you could do a, you know, a bubble wrap or a pie chart, like whatever, whatever makes sense, just some sort of a visual. Um, and then clicking on the, the often answers in that particular vision, visual, and then having a second visual on the same dashboard with the question two answers. That would be my initial thinking of how that, how you might be able to get that to work. Um, okay, sorry, that actually is how I have it set up. Oh, it um, is, okay. Yeah, except, so all my data, it's kind of, what do they call it, like long and narrow. Um, I had pivoted the responses, so, you know, you might answer 20 questions and you'll show up 20 times in the, <laughs> in the set. And so I'm not sure if that pivoting has changed it. And if you can't tell, I'm pretty new at this. No, no it's a good question. Uh, somebody suggested a Sankey diagram. So um, one of our get to, get to know members was talking about, about, about that. And I, that could work, but Sankeys are, um, they can be really difficult um, to pull off, especially if you're new. But um, hmm. I would, like, I I feel like the dashboard visualization filters should work in the way that you would want them to. So I don't know if there is an issue with your data or not without looking at it. Let's see, um, somebody raise their hand and help, help me out here. Help me help Lauren. Somebody has got to have another suggestion. Lauren, could you set up a calculation that would be fixed to the customer or the person who answered and then kind of make it be like a true false? So if the person had answered whatever you want to that question, then include them. Oh, maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Sorry, I saw somebody do something cool in a, um, you know, in one of those data fam community jams where they just kind of clicked one part of their dashboard and everything showed up for the other part. So yep. I was hoping it could be that easy, but maybe that's what I'll, I'll have to do. Yep. Um, I, I was, and my second thought was like, you know, either using sets like we were talking about before, like creating a set um, for, you know, answers to question one that are are often included in that set, use that as a filter. Um, or, and I don't know if this is like, if this is, if this would be a continuous thing, right? So now you want to see people who answer yes to question two, and then you want to see just those, you know, you know, so like you're carrying forward each step in that in that logic to subsequent questions. If that's your goal, that might be um, a lot more tricky to do. Yeah, I don't think I need anything quite that fancy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, sorry, I have a, a very loud dog at the moment, so I keep having to mute myself. But there are, is it a, is it survey? I didn't hear it. survey yeah. data, yeah. Survey. Okay, so there is a lot of information out there on getting survey data ready for Tableau, and I'm assuming that your data, although not, not dirty, it's not set up correctly. And I do see that we have, sorry about that. It's okay, Tricia. Just <laughs> um, but there are some links here that I'm going to send you that people are suggesting. And there's lots of um, top, topics that Tableau has covered via survey data because it does not suit well with Tableau. So it's kind of a, a you have data, but it's actually dirty for Tableau. Right, right, yeah, thank you. Yes, I'll send you that. I just wrote your name down, so I'll send you everything I got in the chat. Great, and, and thanks to the other people who have posted some advice. You are welcome. Um, and feel free to reach out to us outside of this as well. We're like, we're open to that, to that kind of thing, so. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, all right, so we are four minutes past our, our scheduled time. Um, when we do these in person, they usually go to like five or five thirty. But um, yeah, the virtual thing, I think that would be a little bit too long. So, um, all right. I hope everyone has enjoyed the uh, today's session. I think all of our our speakers, Rory and Daria, you guys were amazing, and to everyone that showed up, uh, I hope you have a fabulous Memorial weekend, and we shall see you 
in about a month. Take care, everybody. All right. Thanks, Serena. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys.